Lesson 25, I will decompose and compose fractions greater than 1 to express them in various forms. So beginning in Lesson 24, we were talking about how you could convert improper fractions to mixed numbers. So for example, yesterday or in the last lesson, we were saying if we had 16 thirds, we were saying that this is the same as 5 and 1 third. And with that, today, we're just going to continue on that, but we're also going to go from mixed numbers to improper fractions. So go ahead and get your math journal. We're going to do just a little bit in here today. So make sure that you write today's date and lesson 25, decompose and compose fractions greater than one. Okay, so in your journal today, I want you to draw this number bond right here. We're going to start with this mixed number, two and one six. So go ahead and draw this number bond. And we're going to divide this into two parts. We're going to divide it into how many parts we can make into a whole and then what's left over. So if you think about sixes for just a minute and you think to yourself, well, it takes six sixes to make a whole. And if you've got two holes, then that would be 12 sixes. So that's what we're going to put right here in this number bond, 12 sixes. And then you would have one six left over. So if you added these together, that will give you this improper fraction of 13 sixes. So this is kind of the strategy that we're going to use to go from this mixed number to an improper fraction. Okay, so I want you to draw this number line and I want you to label it from 0, 1, 2, and 3. And you can see that this number line has been decomposed into sixes. I want you to do that too. I don't care if you use little dots like this or if you use the little, um, the little marks that we normally use, but I want you to, to go ahead and break this down into sixes. So you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six parts in every one. You don't have to, you don't have to come through here and write what they are, but I do want you to put the little marks. All right, so if I'm going from zero to six, just like this, how many sixes are there from zero to one? There would be six sixes. And if I went from one to two, how many sixes would there be? There would be six more. And then if I went from two to one six, that would be one six. So this is how you would illustrate an improper fraction to a mixed number on a number line. You can see from zero to one, that's six sixes. From one to two, that's six sixes. And from two to one six, that's one more one six. If we added all these together, we would get 13 sixes. So we'll be using this strategy a little bit today on our problem set. So let's go ahead and go to your problem set, put your name on there, and then let's take a look at the directions. Convert each mixed number to a fraction greater than one draw a number line to model your work. So that's what we just did in our math journals. So you can see that they did the first one for us. Now how this one's a little bit different than what we did in our journals. In our journal, we would have went four fourths, four fourths, four fourths, and they just made this big jump and said 12 fourths. Either way is okay. It just depends on which one makes the most sense to you. And then you can see they have three plus one-fourth, they just separated the whole number from the fraction, and then they said, well, three is the same thing as 12 fourths, and we add it together, you get 13 fourths. So let's see what we can do with this two and four-fifths. So let's start with our number line, and we're gonna need to make our number line go from zero to three, since we know it has to at least go to two, because we have two and four-fifths, and it goes four-fifths past two, so let's just go ahead and make it from zero to three. So I'm going to go just label the whole numbers right now. So I've got one, two, and three. Now since we're talking about fifths, we're going to break each of these holes down into five parts. So that's going to take four lines. Now I'm not going to label them. I'm just going to mark them. Okay, so you can see if I go from zero to one, how many fifths would that be? that would be five-fifths, right? So let's just say if I went from zero to two, that would be five-fifths from zero to one, five-fifths from one to two, so that would be 10 fifths. And then from two to two and four-fifths would be four more fifths. So I'm gonna kinda cut a little bit out of this number sentence that they used, and I'm actually gonna write mine over here. You could, well, let's write it down here. So we've got two and four-fifths, 
and I'm going to say that equals 10 fifths plus 4 fifths equals 14 fifths. So you can see I took out the step that they had 2 plus 4 fifths equals 10 fifths plus 4 fifths. I don't think we need to put that step in there. All right, so let's try C. Okay, so let's draw our number line. So it says 3 and 5 eighths. So that means that we need to go from 0 to 4. And since we're talking about eighths, that means that we need to take each of these holes and divide them into eight parts. So when I do that many parts, I like to go with fourths and then divide them in half. That way they're a little bit more even. So I'm going to divide this in half and then into fourths and then divide each fourth in half. So again, you'll notice I'm not, I'm going from 0 to 3. I've got to think about how many ace that would be. This would be 8 ace, this would be 8 ace, and this would be 8 ace. So what would be 3 eighths? Well, 8 times 3 is 24, so this would be 24 eighths, and then from 3 to 5 eighths would be five more eighths. So now I've got three and five eighths is equal to 24 eighths plus five eighths. So 24 plus five would be 29 eighths. Okay, let's try this one. Tenths are a little bit easier to add to, so this will be a little easier. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to get this number line drawn together. And then we're going to see if you can't do the rest of this by yourself. So I'm going to go from zero to five. I'm going to put in 1, 2, 3, and 4, and then we're going to divide these into tenths. So let's go ahead and go 1, 2, 3, 4, and then divide those into tenths. So 1, 2, 3, 4, that's divided into fifths, and then I'll divide those in half. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and then divide them in half. 1, 2, 3, 4. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, so we're going from 0 to 4. So 0 to 4. So from 0 to 1 would be 10 tenths, and then 10 more tenths, and 10 more tenths, and 10 more tenths. So I've got 10 tenths 4 times. So what would 10 times 4 be? Well, that would be 40. So I've got 40 tenths, and then from 4 to 4 tenths, would be four more tenths. So I've got 40 tenths plus four tenths equals 44 tenths. Okay, let's go down and do E. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our number line started. So we're going to go from zero to five, just like we did last time. So 0, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this time I'm not going to go through here and break these down into 9 parts. I think we can do it without that this time. So let's go from 0 to 4. And let's think about from 0 to 1, how many ninths does it take to make a hoe? Well, it takes 9 ninths. So I've got 9 ninths. 9 ninths, 9 ninths, and 9 ninths. I want you to pause the video and see if you can figure out how many ninths it is from 0 to 4, and then how many ninths it is from 4 to 7 ninths, and see if you can finish the rest of this problem by yourself. If you get stuck, you can just press play and <clears throat> see how far you can get without needing to press play. Okay, so hopefully you thought to yourself, well, 9 ninths, 4 times, would be 36 ninths. And then you would have to add seven more ninths. So that's going to make my number sentence four and seven ninths equals 36 ninths plus seven ninths and that would equal 43 ninths. 
Okay, so let's try a little bit of a different strategy. So you can see here that we're going to convert each mixed number to a fraction greater than 1. Show your work as an example. So this time, we are not using a number line. We're just using a number sentence. So let's look at what they did here. They start with their original fraction, and then here they just separate the whole number from the fraction. And if you'll notice from your number line, if I had three holes, that means I had four fours three times. Because every time I was going four fours, four fours, four fours. So they just said three times four fours. And then they said that's twelve fours plus three fours equals fifteen fours. So if we can understand this, this strategy will be a lot more efficient and will be a, we can do this a little bit quicker. Okay, so I've got four and one third. So that's the same thing as four plus one third. Okay, so now let's think about this four holes. So when we were on the number line, we were saying, okay, we've got three thirds four times. So that's going to be four times three thirds, and I still have to come back and add in that one third. So four times three thirds would be twelve thirds plus one third equals thirteen thirds. Okay, let's try that one more time. So I've got four and three-fifths equals four plus three-fifths. Now because I've got fifths here, that means I'm going to have five-fifths four times for this whole number. So I've got four times five-fifths plus three-fifths. So four times five-fifths would be twenty fifths plus three fifths equals twenty three fifths. Okay, so now for this last part, we're going to do the same strategy, or we actually we can choose whatever strategy we want, but you can see this is a little bitty box. So let's see if we can take a step out so we don't have to write so much. Okay, so this time instead of writing two plus three fourths, let's just start with two times four fourths plus three-fourths. So two times four-fourths would be eight-fourths plus three-fourths equals twelve-fourths. Okay, let's try another one. So I've got two and two-fifths. So that's the same thing as two times five-fifths plus two-fifths. So two times five-fifths is ten-fifths plus two-fifths equals twelve-fifths. If you feel like you can do this next one by yourself, go ahead and pause the video and do the rest by yourself. If not, you can work a couple more with me. Okay, so I've got three and three-six. That is three times six-six plus three-six. So three times six-six is eighteen sixes plus three-six equals twenty-one sixes. Okay, so let's do three and three eighths. So I've got three times eight eighths plus three eighths. So three times eight eighths is twenty four eighths plus three eighths equals twenty seven eighths. Okay, here's some tenths. I like to do tenths because they're easy. So we've got 3 times 10 tenths plus 1 tenth equals 30 tenths plus 1 tenth equals 31 tenths. So if you haven't stopped to try to do any of these by yourself, I want you to stop now and see if you can't do at least this next one all by yourself. Okay, so hopefully you pause the video and try to do this one by yourself and you said 4 times 8 eighths plus three eighths. So four times eight eighths equals thirty two eighths plus three eighths which equals thirty five eighths. All right now I've got five times two thirds, five times three thirds plus two thirds. So five times three would be fifteen so it's fifteen thirds plus two-thirds equals seventeen-thirds. 
six times two halves plus one half. So that would be 12 halves plus one half equals 13 halves. All right, last one. So we have seven times 10 tenths plus three tenths. This would be 70 tenths plus three tenths equals 73 tenths. Okay, so as I'm working through these problems and I'm thinking about how you're going to do when you do these problems together, I'm thinking that the most difficult part you're probably going to have is going to be with some of these multiplication facts because some of you are still struggling to master them. You may have to get out your agenda and look at those facts instead of sitting there and staring at 8 times 6 and not knowing what 8 times 6 is. So other than that, I don't think that you should have any trouble with this strategy. When you get ready to do your exit ticket, just make sure you come back and look at for every whole number is equal to however many your units are. So if I'm doing 3, then that means I've got 3 8 eighths. As long as you can remember that, you'll be able to do this just fine.